Howdy friendos, my name's Stuart, and first of all, I cannot stress this enough. DO NOT TAKE THIS VIDEO SERIOUSLY! This is a for fun video, and we're just gonna be kinda silly this Christmas Eve. Just smile, look back with me as we just kinda remember a Christmas classic. If you haven't watched this movie in a while, you really should. It's, it's still really good. But I'm the alignment guy, and I gotta do my job. But believe me when I say, during the watching, writing, and editing process, I will be as sober as your typical lesbian wine ant once the eggnog gets spiked. Today, we are looking at Kevin McAllister, the central protagonist of the Home Alone movies. Originally, I was going to look at Komi-san today, but unfortunately, I mistimed that, and I didn't realize that the season finale would not premiere until after this date. So I created a community poll asking all of you who you wanted to see replace her, and you guys voted that we should cover Kevin McAllister. Kevin McAllister. Kev Kevin McAllister is an eight-year-old boy living in a very, very upper middle class family. His father is an incredibly successful day trader, and arguably the business manager of Michael Jordan, and his mother does something in fashion according to the shockingly well-managed wiki. One night while the family were getting ready for vacation, tensions rose and Kevin got into a fight with his brother and his parents, which caused him to be banished to the attic. The next morning, the family woke up late and they had to dash off to the airport in order to make their flight, and in the rushing and confusion, Kevin was left Home alone? Ah, uh, that's what they had the title. While Kevin is home alone, some burglars try to break in and Kevin decides it's his duty as the man of the house to defend his home. He set up a bunch of booby traps and hijinks ensue. That's the movie. That's the whole movie. <laughs> We will also be covering the events of the sequel called Home Alone Lost in New York, where pretty much the exact same thing happens, but Kevin also accidentally boards a flight to New York City. Okay, at the beginning of the movie, Kevin is an eight-year-old kid. I also might add that this is a surprisingly realistic eight-year-old kid, which means he's a selfish, egocentric turd. Kids, by their very nature, are just like that. I know. I got my own kid. She sucks. I love her. This is why I ask you guys not to take this video seriously. We're gonna take Kevin's actions at as close to face value as possible today. And we are, much like the US court sometimes, going to try Kevin as an adult, which means we're gonna be as mean-spirited, as literal, and as blatantly harsh as possible. Anyway, Kevin being an eight-year-old egocentric and hyperactive kid is chaotic neutral. I trust nobody has any arguments against that. I'm gonna do my typical Stuart-isms this video, but we're gonna just take what we see at face value and be silly. Uh, you'll see in both the dings and in the post analysis, um, but you know, it's, it's Home Alone, guys. <laughs> Come on. Also, just for fun, I want to make this comment section just as stupid as possible. I really need you guys to be like shocked and appalled as you can be. I want to see comments like, I can't believe Kevin did that. This kid's a menace and must be stopped. Goodness, I hope the police are informed of what he did. Just, just hit me with your best shot. I am determined not to be sober this weekend, and I want to read the best comments off to my folks at Christmas dinner. And if uh, the comments are good enough, I'll like, I, I don't know, do you guys want a video of the best ones? That sounds fun, actually. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go. I'm Kevin McAllister, 671 Lincoln Boulevard. Do you need the phone number? No, that's all right. I was making ornaments out of fish hooks. My new fish hooks? I can't make ornaments out of the old ones. Kevin starts the movie kind of being a brat, which tracks. He's the youngest child out of five siblings. Yes, I checked the surprisingly informative wiki. And he's just eight years old. He's refusing to clean up, pack his suitcase, and is just kind of in the way of picking things up. Chaotic neutral. Did anyone order me a plain cheese? Well, yeah, we did. But if you want any, somebody's gonna have to barf it all up. So, like, Buzz was being a total butthole here. He ate Kevin's pizza and was a total turd all night. Buzz did this purposely to bully Kevin. Honestly, I'd give Kevin a chaotic good if I could, because sometimes you just need to punch a bully to set him straight, but unfortunately, I gotta say it's chaotic evil. I didn't want to see you again for the rest of my whole life, and I didn't want to see anybody else either. Arguably, this is the meanest thing Kevin does to his family. He wishes they would all disappear. Granted, it's a heated argument, but since we're judging harshly, let's go with chaotic evil. I made my family disappear. 
Yeah! Kevin, believing that he willed his family out of existence, goes on a bender almost every kid dreams of. Truly the voice of a generation. He spends an extended length of time watching that gangster movie from Detective Pikachu and just reveling in his newfound freedom. Chaotic neutral, twice. Kevin hears the wet bandits, Harry and Marv, outside and turns on the lights to scare them off. It works, but then he hides under the bed for the night. Neutral. This is ridiculous. Only a wimp would be hiding under a bed. And I can't be a wimp. I'm the man of the house. Facing his fears, Kevin charges into the night and declares his bravery. This is the result. <laughs> In his defense, his older brother told Kevin that this guy is supposedly a serial killer. Chaotic neutral. The pari- the paris. The police arrive later that night and Kevin doesn't answer the door. This is actually pretty reasonable. Neutral. I took a shower washing every body part with actual soap, including all my major crevices. Kevin is very responsible, washing all of the major crevices. We'll just give him a lawful neutral. Voice is life saving. Stealing his brother's money, however is at best a survival crime and at worst grave robbing, especially since he thinks he phased his family out of existence. You're telling me that this family doesn't have any money tucked away somewhere in this big ass house for emergencies? I ain't buying it. He purposely went after his brother's money for revenge. Plus he tore up his room. For shame, Kevin, for shame. Chaotic evil. Son, hey! Then he steals a toothbrush from a small independent family owned business. Sure, he might have been scared from the rumored serial killer looming nearby, but this is no excuse. You go back and pay for that toothbrush, young man. Want more evidence? He even runs from the police. Surely the police are always on our side. And no, I'm stopping that joke right there. Neutral evil. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Recognizing Harry from when he disguised himself as a cop earlier in the movie, Kevin makes a break for it and hides in a nativity scene at a church. This is chaotic neutral, but keep in mind that this is the only time Kevin interacts with them and doesn't choose violence. Later that night, he dresses up his parents' mannequins and other supplies and makes it seem like there's a ton of adults currently at his house. Shoot, that's not a negative. Um. Oh, look at how Kevin takes his parents' stuff without asking and defends his house non-violently. Shit, I'm off my game, neutral. I'm gonna give you to the count of 10 to get your ugly, no good keister off my property before I pump your guts full of lead. One, two, 10. Perfect, I, I mean, uh, I, sorry, uh, Kevin traumatizes the poor pizza boy and totally cheaps out on the tip. Even in 1992, this was considered a dick move not to tip the delivery boys more than just loose change. Chaotic evil. I'm going. One, two, ten. <laughs> After grocery shopping with all of his ill-gotten gains, Kevin then attempts to scare off the wet bandits using trickery and subtlety. Fair. Too bad they see through it and they decide to come back later that night. Neutral. Would you please tell him that instead of presents this year, I just want my family back. Kevin visits Santa before the wet bandits arrive and asks Santa to bring his family back. Since he wished them out of existence, of course. Since he does wish back even the family members he doesn't like, I guess we'll have to give him a lawful good for this. You can say hello when you see me. You don't have to be afraid. Okay, and in all seriousness, I, I really like this scene. It's very genuine and very sweet. Kevin decides to go to church, presumably to pray for his family's return, and runs into the neighbor who approaches him and they have a very good heart to heart. The old man explains that he isn't mean like the kids are saying, and that he's there to visit his granddaughter, and he's had a falling out with his son some time ago. Kevin gives him some pretty solid and, might I add, well-written advice that helps the man. This scene makes me almost miss church, and it's very nostalgic to me for for some reason. This scene feels like Christmas, and it's nice. Neutral good. This is my house. I have to defend it. Kevin exercises his rights as an American citizen to defend his house from unlawful entry. He sets up traps and readies himself. Good on you, Kevin. Lawful neutral. Hello. Did you guys really think I wouldn't give the home invasion part of this movie a nat 20 scene? This movie is just as funny as you remember. Go watch it, it's a ton of fun. Also, holy shit, some of these traps are absolutely sadistic. I know he's completely in his rights to defend his house, but he goes out of his way to make the experience as miserable and as painful as possible. Jesus, lawful evil. 
My health is being robbed. My address is 656 Lincoln Boulevard. My name is Murphy. Kevin fakes a call to 911 about the bandits being in his neighbor's house. He plans this in such a way that he will have to break into their house, kite the wet bandits there, and then... I don't actually know what the next part of his plan was. Chaotic good? Hey guys, check this out. Kevin, 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 you don't have to do this. Kevin, wait, stop, don't! Hiya, pal. This arguably caused him to get busted by them too, since they reached the ground a lot faster than as if they crawled over. Fortunately, he is saved by the neighbor he made friends with. Kevin forgives his mom, despite the fact that, uh... Yeah, no, not gonna lie, she probably deserves punishment. Although, I would like to add that he cleaned his house and still didn't clean the mess in his brother's room! Neutral good. Why do we have to go to Florida? There's no Christmas trees in Florida. Kevin, what is it with you and Christmas trees? Two years passed since the first movie, and this film is determined to reset things to status quo, which means we will give Kevin two chaotic neutrals to represent that, one for each year. Get out of here, you nosy little pervert, or I'm gonna slap you silly! Kevin, why did you do that? That's just weird. Chaotic neutral. This is literally the same problem as the last movie, but yeah, that's on purpose. Buzz picks on Kevin, Kevin chooses violence, yells at family, Kevin's family sucks. Chaotic evil twice. Something wicked this way comes. We did it again! The next day, the same problem happens and the family sleeps in. They get to the airport and Kevin gets separated as he steals, uh, I, I guess, currently borrows his father's man purse. Because of this nonsense, Kevin gets separated and boards a plane to New York. Chaotic neutral. Families in Florida, I'm in New York. Once he realizes this, he takes his dad's credit card and decides to go toy buying, sightseeing, and oof, that hit different than I expected. Mm. After he does all of that, he goes to a luxury hotel, neutral evil. <laughs> Funnily enough, we never lose our luggage. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I I'm just gonna chalk this up to bad writing, but, uh, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm. Nope, don't like that. And your mom, she didn't try to save you or come back on you? She didn't care, man. Come on, let's get out of here before somebody sees us. Just reintroducing characters for later. Uh, the wet bandits escape from prison, and Kevin runs into a homeless lady that is obsessed with birds. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. So, fun story. In college, one of my mentors was a professor who was one of the greatest history teachers I ever met. He was the kind of guy who put everything into every single lesson that he did. He collected memorabilia from all across the U.S. in order to teach his history classes. He stressed hard about trying to get as many first-person sources as possible and was just a great guy. A really engaging teacher, too. I, I bring him up because he always made it his life's goal to personally meet every single president that was ever in office. He was liberal as hell, but he never, like, flaunted it or anything, and he loved meeting U.S. presidents, and he made sure to get autographs of every single one, from Jimmy Carter all the way to Barack Obama. I lost contact with him after I left education, and I never did get to learn if he got Trump's signature. After I'm done editing this video, I think I'm gonna try to email him. Uh, my point is, uh, say what you want about this person and this cameo, but it gave me a good thought and a good memory. Cedric? Yes? Don't count your tips in public. We've gotten to know each other pretty well at this point. They say you could tell a lot about a man by where he first saw Tim Curry. First person in the comments who can guess which movie I first saw Tim Curry in will get a free Dragon Ball Races and Classes PDF over on our website, LoadingCrewCrafts.com. I'll also pin your comment as well. I'll give you a hint. It wasn't this movie. You're the only duck in my pond. Get down on your knees and tell me you love me. <laughs> Funny. The other day, Alex and I got really drunk, and I said the same. Later, Tim Curry goes to check in on Kevin, and he rigs up a party clown thing that he got as a present earlier in the movie, and tricks Tim Curry into thinking he walked in on his dad showering. He reaffirms this lie later, and continues to con the hotel and buy luxurious things. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Neutral evil. No tip? Okay. Kevin is a dick when it comes to tips. Chaotic evil. So you can give this to Mr. Duncan. The hospital needs it more than I do. Hmm. Kevin said he got this from shoveling snow. I'll believe him for now, but I'm going to give him a chaotic good for this. Hiya, pal. <gasps> ah! 
Perfectly reasonable reaction. Chaotic neutral. What's the matter? Store wouldn't take your stolen credit card. Running away from Tim Curry, though, and stealing stuff from the hotel. Not so much. Neutral evil. Oh! He did it! Oh! Chaotic neutral. Just, just let him have it, guys. Thanks! Kevin tries to go to his relative's house, but they aren't home because they're renovating. So the next like half hour movie is Kevin lost in New York and running around scared. He bonds with a pigeon lady from earlier. Neutral good. I don't know if I'll have enough time to do all the good deeds. I need to erase all the bad ones I did. Well, it's Christmas Eve. Good deeds can for extra tonight. Oh, well that was a rule I was unaware of. All right, you heard the lady. Good deeds tonight count as double. You can mess with a lot of things. Can't mess with kids on Christmas. And with those words of inspiration, Kevin takes it upon himself to defend the toy store and the money they plan to donate to the children's hospital. Knowing he probably can't tip off the police or he'll be arrested, he sets up another trap filled house and kites them over by smashing the window, setting off the alarm for the police, snapping their picture, and leaving a note with the owner. Chaotic good. Give it to me! Whoa! Kevin, dude! That shit kills people, dude. Oh my God. Okay, maybe he meant to scare him off or he just, I mean, they did threaten to murder him. Warning shots can be effective if- Oh my God. Okay, Kevin, it's not too late. You can call an ambulance and maybe he'll live. Kevin, stop, he's going to die. Kevin, please, you don't need to do this. You don't need his blood on your hands. Oh, Kevin, please, he has a wife and a mother. Kevin! Hey! I've reached the top! <laughs> also, holy shit! Kevin has tasted blood and my god this boy is thirsty for it. The traps in this house are so deadly, so cruel, and absolutely hilarious. If this movie did anything right, it's the friggin' slapstick. These traps are so much better than the first movie. Lawful evil. Now why would anybody soak a rope in kerosene? What? Kevin's rampage is stopped by a random patch of ice. The wet, sticky bandits take him to the secluded part of the park to murder him, but fortunately the pigeon lady he befriended earlier helps him. He then sets off fireworks in order to alert the police where the bandits are. Chaotic good. I never want another thing as long as I live. I just want my mother. Kevin re-wishes his family back, and it works. Let's just give him a neutral good. I got something for you. This technically counts, I guess. Neutral good twice. Kevin, you spent $967 on rope service! <gasps> So even with being as harsh as possible, and even if I discount the double dings, Kevin is a pretty good kid. Come on, we're not taking this video seriously anyway. It's Home Alone, guys. And again, he's an eight-year-old, also a 10-year-old kid. And no, I'm not gonna count Home Alone 4 for lots of reasons. Despite the fact that they say this is Kevin McAllister, it just isn't. Consider it an AU. First of all, Kevin had four other siblings and he was the youngest. This movie only has two siblings. The hair is wrong, the house is wrong, and the worst mistake they made was this scene right here. Breakfast time. Anything special you'd like? Anything? Anything. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are Kevin McAllister and you were offered anything, anything in the world for breakfast, what would you ask for? Would it be A, a cheese pizza, your favorite food in the world, B, an oversized bowl of ice cream, or C, a hearty nutritious breakfast with all the major food groups? Go ahead and guess now in the comments. Pause the video, I'll, pa I'll wait. Did you guess a reasonable stack of French toast sticks? A food Kevin has never expressed interest in before? Shame on you, Home Alone 4. You didn't do any research at all. Shame on. Although I don't know if this theory has been put forward, but part of me thinks Home Alone 4 is actually the last second hallucination of Marv as the light fades from his eyes from when Kevin threw the fourth goddamn brick at his skull. It would explain the continuity errors and some of these weird changes. But but that's way too dark. 
but hilarious. And also, no, not counting this YouTube video. I'm just not. I'm not doing it, guys. And with that, I hope you guys all had fun. I know I did. I hope you guys also have a very Merry Christmas, a very happy holiday season, and a fantastic New Year. We'll be dropping one last video tomorrow, but then I think I'm going to take a break until mid to late January. Um, my birthday is January 2nd. If you want to swing by the server or my Twitter and wish me a happy birthday, I'm turning into a much older man. I'm so old. Um... <laughs> I might drop a comment response video because this month of marathoning videos has been very enlightening. Uh, but I want to take a short rest before I dive back into work. Um, so thank you to the patrons, and I'll see you all next time.